Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Conodger here, your host of the Conlanders Season 3, a set of course, a season in the MX5 Cup Miatas. We are doing awards once again, and we are going to start right off with the Fan Vote Awards. So these are all nominations that you guys can choose from in straw polls, and details of that stuff is in the description. So, for the Darlington Stripe, we have on the top left, Squid with a post-qualifying crash that ends up with Squid using Jump as a ramp rocketing up the pit wall to the wonderment of all of us that were sitting in the pits waiting for the race to start. Uh, that was that was quite a humorous thing to happen there at Barcelona. Bottom left we would have Marzin, and I'm just gonna go ahead and let Joe handle what happened here. You just got Marzin. Top right we have Mach 1 Fireman who causes a little bit of a log jam headed down the mountain at Mount Panorama. We all knew that was gonna happen, and it's really a surprise to nobody. Bottom right, we have Carl PC, who catches the brunt of a massive hit in Silverstone at the start. It was a good enough of a hit that it really launched his car up onto two wheels, and that was just a huge cluster headed through the, the tight section of the crossover of Silverstone. And now for the finish of the season, top left we have Sevi and Ollie who have a .101 difference at the line. Ollie really made up a lot of time going into Parabolica there and had a great run out and was really looking like maybe he could use the draft to pass him but ends up having Sevi across the line first. Bottom left we have Squid and Piker with a .186 difference at the line. However, it was a great pass by Squid on Piker in the last chicane at the Durburgring track. It was a bold move and he was able to hold on to the line. Top right we have Sharky and Gem Knight in an epic race long battle and right up to the line have the closest finish of the season of .051 where Sharky holds off Gem Knight. And then bottom right, we have Servatus, myself, and Maestro on the last lap of the Barcelona feature race. I end up having a pass on Maestro mid-lap and put a charge onto Servatus. And recovery drive. This time it is Servatus and myself making up the entire list, but with four different races. On the top left, we have Servatus with a 10 place gain at Velilunga after contact with Piker. He gains 10 spots back at that Titan Technical Circuit. Bottom left, we have myself with a 12 position gain at Mugello after the infamous incident where uh, me and Sharky got into a collision on lap 1. However, through just a good consistent race, I managed to make up 12 spots throughout the race. Top right, Cervantes once again with a 10 position gain at the Nürburgring. This time, after getting gunned down by Gunsis in turn 1, makes up 10 positions on this hard to pass track. And then bottom right, myself again, a 13 position gain thanks to an early shove off track by none other than Spooky Squid. I dropped to 18th and managed to fight my way back to third place at the finish. And lastly, as always, since this whole series was founded on being a good place for people to do commentaries, let's plays in sim racing environments, the best commentary award, uh, top left, well, it's me. I don't know, why am I still in this? Uh, bottom left you have Ollie, who does a combination post and live commentary. Uh, really good humor, he, I would say, I'm gonna link to his Barcelona heat, because there was lots of really funny little quips in that. Top right we have Mach 1 Fireman, who is a previous best commentary winner, does post commentary as well, and is always full of just great moments in every video that he does. Piker, bottom right, is one of our newer Conelanders video producers. He does live commentary as an aggressive but clean racing style, always racing up front with the with the big names and the big dogs. Really an impressive, I think, uh, newcomer to the sim racing commentary scene. And there we go, there is all of the nominations for fan votes and driver votes. So, Conelanders, everybody that competed in the league will have our own vote, and then there's straw polls below in the description, so you can vote on all of these categories. And in a comment in the video, I will put uh, timestamps to all of the different categories, so you can go back and rewatch everybody's uh, clips of why they were nominated and stuff like that, so it's easy to find. And so there we go. That is a wrap on season number three, the Conelanders Assetto Corsa Championship. 
I am pretty pleased with how this season went. We tried a lot of new things, and uh, we ended up with a, uh, a very familiar face up at the top. Sharky, with 299 points, taking the championship, really threw down the gauntlet early. Uh, it was very apparent that the, uh, the weight balance system had affected him by mid-season, but I didn't have, personally, a clean enough second half of the season to really take advantage of that. So unfortunately, I didn't uh, have the close battle with him that I was really hoping to have here. Maestro put on a lot of pressure early as well, and also faded in the second half of the season. It was an interesting uh, turn of events, really. Right around Silverstone, things started to really shake up in the field. We see a lot of new winners throughout the, you know, back half of the points championship. And overall, it's just a, a big shakeup all, all around. And of course, Piker takes home the Rookie of the Season. I believe this is going to be the last season that we do Rookie of the Season, at least uh, at least not for next season. So congratulations to Piker for that. You, you claim what is perhaps the last of that title, and you did it in great style. You really were impressive start to finish. You were very consistent, and uh, I don't think I ever really heard anybody have a bad word to say about you throughout the season, so... Good job on that. That's tough to do in these parts. It was really great to add some existing sim racing content creators this season with Racer. Uh, Jolo joined us for a good part of the season there, and hopefully he can continue to join in in the future. He's always fun to have around. Kurt got to take part in four events, which is the most he's been able to do in a Conelander season, and he seemed to enjoy himself in the time that he had here. Uh, but overall, I think it was a successful season. And I look forward to future seasons not hosting. So starting this Saturday, we will be racing in GT3 in a series presented by Moose, which I mentioned in the last race. So I'll be shifting my focus from the person who's spearheading the organization of everything to just a person racing. And I think that will be really enjoyable for me, even though GT3 is a series that, uh, and a class of car that I don't particularly do that well in. Hopefully the ability to focus on driving will will help me out there. There's a lot of changes in that series. It's not going to be exactly like you see here uh, with the big group calls and stuff like that. It will be a little bit more to the serious side of league racing than this was to more the fun side. I plan in the future to kind of take over the, the more casual, fun style of league and series under the Codelanders banner. And Moose and others can handle the more, you know, serious competitive sides of it. It'll be nice to have both sides, you know, different enjoyment for different times and stuff like that. But I do want to thank everybody for the support here in Season 3. It was a lot of fun. I hope you all enjoyed, and I look forward to seeing you in the future. <laughs>